Hey everyone, after three introduction videos, we are now getting to the main block of this channel. My plan is to present the eight circuit model of consciousness developed by Dr. Timothy Leary and further improved by Robert Anton Wilson. This model turned out to be tremendously useful if one wants to work with one's own mind. It categorizes behavior and experience of living beings into eight brain circuits that may represent any state of consciousness one living being can undergo. Some brain circuits may be directly related to specific brain regions or algorithms that are already known. However, we're talking about a model. And this model may induce a fascinating view of reality when applied and internalized. But remember, the map is not the territory. Human experience can be generalized by four mechanisms, each one having a different impact on consciousness. Genetics. Your DNA acts as the super code giving instructions on how to build up your body. It governs growing cells, developing reflexes and instincts. It's extremely hardwired and changing it means changing DNA code sequences, which occurs during evolution and is also called mutation. Imprints. Pretty hardwired programs and algorithms giving orders on how to process interaction with other humans and reacting to any kind of situation. These imprints usually occur at specific periods of life, starting when getting born and are pretty hardwired until your 20s. Imprints are changed when your brain gets into a very vulnerable state. These states can be induced when experiencing life-threatening situations, advanced meditation and some other techniques we will discuss pretty soon. Usually these imprint changes occur unintentionally because of traumatic situations and therefore they are mostly undelightful. It is very likely that brain changes happen to people who are now called saints or prophets. Since imprints are pretty static and hard to change, most people stay with their imprints until death. Conditioning results in developing habits and can be changed far more easily than imprints. However, counter-conditioning may demand lots of work and willpower. Learning even less static than conditioning and can be changed pretty fast. However, learning other stuff that may contradict old knowledge can also cause problems. Now we will discuss the eight circuits. Circuit 1 till 4 are active within every person. They are imprinted at different stages of life and govern any kind of behavior. Different imprints result in different personalities. Circuit 5 till 8 are not active within every person. Circuit number 5 and 6 can still be discussed in a pretty scientific way, since advanced mathematics and neuroscience can be related to many experiences at these circuits. The last two circuits can only be discussed in analogies, since they are experienced far beyond your daily state of consciousness and immediately sound mystical and perhaps crazy to most people who haven't had any of such experiences. Let's get started with the first circuit, also called the oral bias survival circuit. Imprinted at infancy by your mother or mother-like object and then further conditioned at nourishment or threatening situations at that age. The oral bias survival circuit is indeed oral. Breastfeeding, sucking, cuddling and any kind of basic body security is related to this circuit. It governs your behavior of being rather afraid or very curious towards unknown situations or people. Circuit number two the anal emotional territorial circuit. Imprinted when the child starts to walk and then becomes an active member within social structures. Being a dominant or a submissive person, the general state in the pecking order is encoded within that circuit. It is already developed in mammals and very important for any kind of territorial issue ranging from tribal structures to creating state borders. Third circuit, the time binding semantic circuit. Mapping reality is usually done at this circuit. It encodes relations, experiences and emotions into reality maps or reality tunnels according to imprints at other circuits. This is your semantic circuit and makes it possible to pass information to the next generation. Depending on early experiences and genetic programs, you will be rather intelligent or dumb. 
This circuit maps, calculates, manipulates, invents, predicts and transmits signals. Logic is also located within that circuit. Circuit number 4, the moral, socio-sexual circuit. It is imprinted by the first sexual experiences at puberty. Tribal taboos, which means the sexual norms of your society, condition this circuit to what is right and what is wrong when it comes to sexuality. Parenting is also governed by this circuit. The first circuit is found in very primitive forms of life, the second one in mammals, the third was developed by early humans and the fourth one when societies and tribal structures got into a more organized form. The universe is in equilibrium, therefore he that is without it, though his force be a feather, can move the earth. The universe be not caught within that web of child of freedom, be not detected in the universe lie, child of truth. The next four circuits are not active in every human, but are increasingly accessed within open societies where survival is becoming a minor issue and moral rules are not that strict and life-threatening. Circuit number 5, the holistic neurosomatic circuit. Now this circuit is imprinted by ecstatic experience, people shifting the neurotransmitter equilibrium towards any state of high, bliss, rush and so on. If you can think minor or bigger diseases well again, or if you seek dangerous situations in order to get adrenaline release, you might have become access to circuit number 5. Any kind of neurosomatic approaches, faith healing, NLP, holistic medicine and so on, aim to let your conscious mind operate your bodily feelings. Yoga is another approach to do so. Remember, every thought is psychedelic. Welcome to number 6, the meter programming circuit. The meter programming circuit can, if accessed, reprogram older imprints. It represents cybernetic consciousness, which is found when logic is transcended. There are several techniques to gain meter programming consciousness, and those experiences usually come after years when dealing with magical exercises, Zen koans, Sufi puzzles formal logic and other mind games. It can't be mapped down in order to get an instant glimpse of what we are discussing now. Imagination of this circuit requires already having activated it. In Robert Anton Wilson's Prometheus Rising, the meter programming circuit was at first at number 7, but was then changed in order to re-establish Timothy Leary's order to number 6. Number 7 the collective neurogenetic circuit. It represents a DNA brain feedback loop, which can access the evolutionary script, seeing how life emerged and what may happen in future development is experienced when this circuit is active. Perception at this circuit include synchronicities and mystic experiences of gods, demons and other archetypes. Its activation is done by occult training, yoga or chemical shifting of your brain equilibrium. Number 8. The non-local quantum circuit. It shifts consciousness beyond space and time during near-death experiences or out-of-body experiences. Unification with the All, Tawhid in Sufism and Cosmic Consciousness are some of its names. Each circuit consciousness is usually achieved when ego is that weak that even fear of death won't hold you back. I would like to pass this information to you because for me it turned out that it was really useful to apply the 8 circuit model of consciousness to my own consciousness. So in the next videos I will present each circuit and give examples, exercises and go more into detail how these circuits behave and how you can get access to them and how you can improve them and how you can change them. If you have any kind of remarks or questions, put them in the comment section and I will try to answer them.